All right, good evening. We want to welcome everyone this evening uh, to our medical missionary training and uh, just invite those that are online with us. If you can bow your heads, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us this evening. Father in heaven, we come to thee asking, Lord, for wisdom, for strength, for guidance and direction, for the uh, courage, Father, as we are endeavoring to learn more about what we need to do to uh, keep this temple that you've given us in perfect health. And we ask for leading and guiding in our presentation, be with those that are going to be attending, be with those, Father, that need to be uh, hearing uh, these messages, and also, Father, those that will be uh, listening later on. So bless and guide us, and thank you again for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, this evening, uh, let me get to my PowerPoint, and then I will uh, continue on. Um, my son just brought me some, some headset. Let's see if this will be better sound, uh, Pastor Harold. All right, can everybody hear me better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, let me do the share screen. There we go. All right. We're going, um, continuing on part two of our medical missionary here. Um, one of the things we I want to discuss with you all um, is a lot of times people want to know, you know, what is our qualification? What do we have? And it, I'm not against education, not against uh, learning what we, uh, the anatomy and physiology, things of that nature. But a couple of things here is God actually gives us the qualification. He gives us what we need to have if we're willing to learn and to study for ourselves. So here are some working standards that should be adhered to. Uh, the qualification needed to become a medical missionary can only come from the great physician, Jesus Christ himself. Um, number two, Jesus qualifies those of his disciples who will live and teach obedience to his laws. That is key. We must uh, encourage those that um, need to live it. We, and as we teach it, then we need to be obedient uh, to his laws. The other thing is, our diploma, it's from the endorsement of God, it says, young men and young women, gather a stock of knowledge. Do not wait until some human examination pronounces you a competent, a, a competent to work, but go out into the highways and hedges and begin to work for God. What information we have, what knowledge we have, we're to use it. Uh, otherwise, really, we, we lose it. Use wisely the knowledge you have. Exercise your ability with faithfulness generously imparting uh, the light that God gives you. Study how best to give to others peace and light and truth and the many other rich blessings of heaven. Constantly improve. We need to continue improving, uh, asking God for, for the um, ability to uh, perfect uh, everything that we, we're learning, everything we're doing. Keep reaching higher and still higher. It is the ability to put to the that tax the powers of mind and body, ever keeping eternal realities in view, that is of value. Uh, of value. So it seeks the, the Lord most earnestly, that you may become more and more refined, more spiritually cultured, then you will have the very best diploma that anyone can have. This is what we all want. We should seek for the endorsement uh, of God, so that this is our diploma. And here's another one. It says, the sick are to be healed through the combined efforts of the human and the divine. Every gift, every power that Christ promised to his disciples. You know, he told us the works that he did that we would be able to do. It says he bestows upon those who will serve him and that he is, is faithfully. It says, the ministry of healing says, the providence of God had placed Jesus where he was. And he depended on his heavenly father for means to relieve the necessity when we are brought into straight places, we are to depend on God. In every emergency, we are to seek help from him who has infinite resources at his command. And that's why anytime when we work with anyone, it's always important for us to pray with them first. 
um, because what we do, even the simple rooms don't heal, but only God heals and our obedience and trust and faith in him will uh, be answered because of our faithfulness. Continuing on here, it says we cannot heal. We cannot change the disease conditions of the body, but it is our part as medical missionaries, as workers together with God to use the means that he has provided. Then we should pray that God will bless these agencies. So we're to obey, we need to learn, and then God will bless those, those efforts. It says it is as truly a sin to violate the laws of our being as, to, as it is to break the Ten Commandments. To do either is to break God's laws. Those who transgress the law of God in their physical organism will be inclined to violate the law of God spoken from Sinai. So when we understand that if we break these laws, um, then we are breaking as much the, the Ten Commandments and stuff. So I just want to share this with you because here in Tennessee, we're dealing with the transition from spring, um, um, well, really winter to spring, and there's a lot of people getting sick. So um, hopefully you'll be able to at least uh, screenshot this and, and have it for, uh, available. And what you do for the flu bomb is just take two grapefruits, six lemons, two yellow onions, um, about medium size, six, six cloves of good size uh, garlic, one uh, quarter to half a teaspoon of the cayenne, a half a gallon or two quarts of pure water. Uh, you may want to add some other ingredients, but usually this is pretty, uh, pretty powerful in itself. And what you do is juice the grapefruit and lemons, cut up the rinds and, and mix these all together uh, and, and the ingredients in, into a pot. So you do take the, 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 the rinds from the, uh, the lemons and all that. Bring to a boil and then simmer for about 15 minutes. <clears throat> Strain out the solids and keep the liquid. Put into a mason jar and refrigerate. Uh, you can leave in, it, it in there for actually for months if you need to. If you start to get sick, just you know, drink a half a cup at a, at a time and it normally will knock it out. If you um, do get sick, um, then a half a cup um, about three times a day, basically about every four hours. Um, and this will assist with uh, uh, building up your immune system and, and getting the uh, um, cold or whatever the flu that you maybe have uh, out of your system. So natural remedies, it says the Bible then um, is very important. One of the things that I want to share with you is that um, as we're going to go, I want to share a couple of things with some uh, books and stuff that's very important. And so the Bible is very important to Christians who wish to hear about the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of their Savior. It says the Bible is of paramount importance to Christians because the teachings in the book are the basis of their, their religion. It should be everything. The primary way God speaks to us is through the Bible. This means that one of the first things you should do in your search for God's purpose is to start digging into scriptures. And this is a daily, not just on Sabbaths, but on a daily basis. It says in the Bible, you learn how to live wisely in God's world, which is the first step toward finding your purpose. So all of answers in life are in the Bible, and it's imperative that we have a good Bible. We uh, study it, um, mark it, learn it, and all that, and then we'll be able to impart to others. The next thing is some natural remedies. Um, some things that we will try to cover um, in these couple of days is getting the, uh, the hydrotherapy for like, your hot and cold and fever treatments. Um, or also herbal teas like natural, have a natural medicine cabinet instead of having the aspirins and things of that nature. Uh, learn to have a natural medicine cabinet in, in your, normally you know, we put them in, in the uh, bathroom but if you travel, also have, have a little natural min, remedy ca, uh, uh, kit that you take with you as well. Uh, learn the 12 most important herbs. We're going to try to uh, cover that um, probably later in, in the evening and into tomorrow. Uh, learn to identify herbs, also edible herbs, uh, which ones you should uh, and can eat. Books are also an investment, natural remedy encyclopedia, the 10 talent cookbooks. Uh, the Lewis Tinney uh, Herbal Book, that's a very important, because especially if you're going to be using learning uh, herbs, on, on, uh, and also this will help you to know what, what they're good for. And then making your own herbal teas and stuff uh, and dealing with uh, imbalanced hormones. Uh, a lot of men and women um, are having to deal with a lot of um, uh, hormone problems and stuff because the foods, the lifestyle, medications, and what have you. 
So this is the first one here that I mentioned, the Natural Remedy Encyclopedia. This is from Vance Farrell. Um, great book, every home should have this, should go through this. And as you see, you know, it covers 730, the most common diseases, 11,000 inexpensive uh, home remedies. Also has a section on hydrotherapy, uh, poisonous plants um, to avoid um, midwifery as well as in there. So it's a very good book with about um, uh, 1200 and something pages. So it's very worth the investment. Uh, the other one that Vance actually has is the natural healing uh, remedies. Um, this was actually, uh, the title was the hygienic family physician. Um, and so again, this is you know a good book to have in in your shelf um, to be able to reference. I encourage you to to uh, do the best you can to read it, but it's worth uh, having in your your library. Another one's called Backyard Pharmacy Seeds. Uh, this deals with uh, weeds that that heal. This is from uh, Rachel Weaver, uh, and so this is a, another good reference book. Um, a little bit more expensive than than the previous book that that we shared. Uh, this one, again, by Rachel Weaver, this is Be Your Own Doctor 101, 101 stories um, of different people, uh, what they did naturally to overcome different uh, health problems. Uh, this is the, uh, the second one, uh, Be Your Own Doctor Companion. So this is just another, uh, just a second volume here to be able to have. Um, and as you can see, the price is, you know, um, is, is minimal uh, to me compared to the value of the information that, that's in these books. Another one here is the uh, Cancer Solution. Um, this one deals with like the Gershon Clinic and several other different um, uh, lifestyle centers that are out there that have alternative um, means and ways to deal with, with cancers. Another great uh, book, especially in this, these last days. And, uh, another book by Russell Blaylock, uh, Excitotoxins. I'm sure probably some of you have probably read these or had these before. Um, I, I, like I said, I ha have these, and so I'd like to have, have something to be able to refer uh, to them, especially when you're talking to individuals. Uh, the China Study, again, by T. Colin Campbell. It's another good book. Uh, talks about how how people basically really uh, eating themselves to death. Um, they have a huge uh, China study there, and um, um, just very in fascinating information out of that book. Uh, this other one is an, uh, it's been re-covered. Um, it's called the International Meat Crisis, um, how basically the mad cow disease and, and things of that nature, how animals were, were being raised and, and slaughtered, and how from that the diseases come into um, consumption into the, uh, the Americans and, and just humans around around the world. So it's very good to have uh, inexpensive, really, if you buy it in the caseload to be able to give away. So uh, the vaccination crisis is another one, especially that we've just dealt with the last couple of years. Uh, there's some information in here on, on uh, what you can do to try to uh, avoid being forced to be vaccinated and all. And so this is another uh, good reference, a lot of good information uh, to have uh, and to read, especially if you're, if you're parents uh, with children. Uh, this one is you can quit tobacco. Um, there are so many people, as, as you know, again, that are dealing with, uh, with smoking and, and they're struggling trying to uh, uh, quit that, uh, that habit and all. And so this is kind of a, a good guide to helping uh, you understand um, what you can do to help these in individuals to break, break those habits. Um, this is one that I mentioned earlier about Lewis Tinney's. Um, this one's some, sometimes hard to find. Uh, this is the last edition. I believe this is the uh, sixth edition. And, uh, but it, it gives a great reference because it uh, goes about um, each of the herbs that are most commonly used, about 200 herbs that, that she covers in here. And she gives a primary use for these herbs and a secondary use and all um, how to even combine some of some kind of a standard, not a real in-depth, but it's very uh, worth getting. I've seen this book sometimes even on Amazon uh, advertised for over a thousand dollars. So if you can get it for 60 or what have you, it, you're doing pretty good. Uh, the 10 talent cookbook here, as you're familiar with as well, um, this is again a great book because I, especially I like the, the fact that it has pictures in in um, in there because it shows what the food uh, should look like when you fix it. Also has meal planning 
Uh, so Rosalie Hurd has done a great job, and I think this uh, is the newest edition that that um, she has with 675 pages and over 1,300 different pictures of the different foods. Let me go and see. This. Another one is uh, these you may freely eat. Um, this one again is very inexpensive. Usually you can get them for about three dollars. Um, uh, 250 different recipes in there, very economical to to. Um, uh, uh, foods to be able to prepare, but it's also uh, very affordable to be able to purchase these in large quantities and give them out to friends and families, even uh, church members for them to be able to have. Um, this one is one that I actually, when I was a call for here this in the, for the Southern Union, uh, foods uh, and their healing power. Um, uh, used to sell these for over $300, but you can find them on eBay, uh, Amazon. Uh, for about $159 for the three volumes. And what the first volume actually deals with is covering um, about 700 different foods that are most commonly uh, uh, um, eaten here in America. And, and it goes into, you know, the, uh, the first book at the back, it uh, breaks down the nutritional value, you know, from different, um, the nutrients from vitamins and things of that nature. The second one actually groups the foods together that are the best for different ailments from even um, if you have cataracts to uh, uh, um, if you're diabetic and what have you. And then the third volume actually gives you the recipes um, to, to be able to put these foods together for these diff different type of health ailments like even heart disease, uh, cancers and all that. And then another one, a good medicinal uh, plant book is an encyclopedia that is, uh, it's, it's a great companion kind of to the Lewis Tinney um, and it does similar to the uh, foods that heals. It gives you all the herbs, and then the second volume deals with how to group these together for the different ailments uh, with it within the different bo body um, uh, uh, functions and stuff like that. So it covers a little bit more of the uh, plants. Uh, uh, with the two volumes, you get about 1,200 pages there. So uh, it's again uh, well worth the investment. So um and always you know the ministry of healing is something that we should give out um in our programs we give this to every um guest that comes and i found this this um quote or this little pamphlet and i thought i'd put it to my uh, add to my powerpoint because to me it's very it, it's very powerful it says this is from the department of nutrition from cornell university from new york it says uh, every modern specialist in nutrition whose life is dedicated to human welfare must be impressed in four respects by the writings and leadership of Ellen G. White. Now, this is from Clive McKay, he's a PhD professor of nutrition, not Adventist. And this guy's writing about he got a hold of the Ministry of Healing, read it, was interested, started reading other books from Ellen White. He says, in the first place, her basic concepts about the relation between diet and health have been verified to an unusual degree by scientific advances of the past decades. So she under, he understood that what she wrote back in the mid 1800s have now been being uh, verified and it's just, it, it, it fascinated him. He goes on and says, in the second place, Everyone who attempts to teach nutrition can hardly conceive of a leadership such as that of Miss White that was able to induce a substantial number of people to improve their diets, meaning he understood that she, he, she was able to influence many Seventh-day Adventists to make lifestyle changes. And then he goes on and says, in the third place, one can only speculate about the large number sufferers during the past century, which could have had improved health if they had only accepted the teachings of Mrs. White. The, that to me is powerful. He understands that if the pe these people had accepted just her writings, they could have done, they could improve, they could probably had a, a better quality of life, even a longer life and everything else. And he said, if they had only accepted the teachings, that kind of makes me wonder, you know, why did we as, as uh, God's people did not promote this even more? And why are we not doing that now? And then he says, finally, one can wonder how to make her teaching more widely known to benefit the overcrowded earth that seems inevitable tomorrow unless the present rate of increase of the world's population is decreased. He says, in spite of the fact that the works of Miss White were written long before the advent of modern scientific nutrition, he says, no better overall guide is available today, even though she lived over, you know, 100 years ago, died in 1915. 
he says she was advanced and all that. And so we shouldn't be ashamed. We shouldn't be embarrassed. We should give these, this book to everyone we can. Yes, along with the great controversy, this will uh, do a, a dramatic change in people's lives. And then when their health improves, then we'll be able to work with them with spiritual things as well. Continuing on. Another one is the medical missionary manual. Um, as if you're looking to be a medical missionary, this to me is the one of the first books, probably the very first book that I would uh, highly re recommend um, along with the Broken Blueprint. Um, when I first read this years ago, probably about 20 something years ago, I actually read it a couple of times and I cried because uh, understanding that we as a people have totally, totally gone away from the instructions that God gave uh, our prophet to give to us as to how we're supposed to have medical missionaries or sanitariums um, out there to try to reach the people. So again, these two books are, are valuable for you to, to, to get um, the medical missionary manual and also the, the broken blueprint. So let's continue on. Let's look at some equipment that I would in, encourage you to look and invest in. And, and these books and, and the, these tools are something that don't be overwhelmed thinking you have to have all these things. It's just what I'm sharing with you all is what I actually teach when we're training students to actually run a lifestyle center and telling them, say, you know, don't go into debt for this, but as you go along, because my wife and I, you know, doing this for 22 years, um, we didn't just have the money to buy all this stuff. We just, as we got the money, we started investing in these things to, uh, to over time, and we were able to finally get them. So uh, again, a Vitamix is great because you're gonna be using that constantly, especially making different uh, juices or smoothies and things of that nature. Um, I like the Magic Bullet because it's small, it's compact, it's affordable, and it's easy to, to clean instead of having, always having to use the Vitamix. A, uh, a steamer, because if you're moving toward more of a plant base, even increasing or teaching people to eat more of a raw diet, um, especially, you know, 60% uh, in most cases, or people that have um, different diseases, cancers and all that, then uh, it's good to have something if you're going to work with people, if you, whether if it's in your home or if you go to them, to be able to have this, this type of equipment. Uh, a food processor is also very, very good, especially when you're making different salads to, to make your salads uh, look more uh, edible and, and, and nutritionally good. Uh, Champion juicer, um, I know there's different ones out there, the uh, jack o -Lanes, the Omega juicers and things of that nature. I just found that the Champion is just a rock solid machine. Um, it is an investment, but um, I always tell people when they see it. A lot of times some people are like, oh, I've got to have it. I'm like, no, you need to think about this because it's an investment. It's over $400. And if you're not going to use it um, faithfully, then it's not worth getting. But if you are, then it's very worth and valuable uh, to have and to use. Another thing is, especially, <clears throat> you know, moving toward teaching people to have like a um, more of a plant-based diet. And if they have diabetes and cancers, you want to have a good garlic press, uh, something that will, uh, easy to clean, but easy, uh, easy to use. And you can, in, you can invest, you know, it used to be 30, $40 for these things. Now the pricing has come down and places like Marshall, TJ Maxx, you'll be able to, or even Ross, if, if you all have them out there, uh, we'll be able to afford uh, to get those. Um, also some type of, um, citrus, uh, uh, juicer. Um, this one's for like, uh, lemons and limes and all that. Um, uh, a uh, Excalibur, I know that's a little bit expensive, but some type of dehydrator is also nice to have um, to teach people how, how to dehydrate and to, ha and to have different fruits and vegetables uh, for snacking. Uh, a larger uh, citrus juicers, like for your grapefruits and all that, uh, inexpensive, about $15 at Walmart. Uh, it's no sense in spending anything more than that. Um, and because a lot of times, you know, they may last for a couple of years and you have to throw them away and get another one. Um, this is another uh, suggestion as you're looking, at, you know, if you're going to be working with people, um, there is you, you know, online, you can find this legal guidelines for unlicensed practitioners. Uh, there can be a challenge um, uh, when, especially if you've had your, um, your um, MD or your you know, certificate for an RN, 
uh, in medical missionary, uh, one of the things that we have found, uh, especially we have a neighbor that um, uh, he was a pharmacist and his wife was a RN and they had a little clinic and they were using their credentials and they ended up getting in trouble. What was sad is actually some admins turned them in and um, they actually had to go in, in, to jail for a couple of days and agreement ended up being that uh, the judge asked them, you just or told them they, they could never practice anymore doing this stuff. So this is why it's important for for us to understand these legal guidelines. And so what that the book the book uh, covers uh, laws and their purposes, legal concepts about health and healing, practice options, how thoughts, words, and deeds of, uh, affect legal status, consent, disclaimer, and disclosure statements, uh, what you can use, uh, especially when you're working with, with individuals. To, it's important to have disclaimers or release forms, records, corporate status and insurance, difference between licensing and certification, uh, the case against a medical licensing, um, the psychology of licensing uh, says, what are you, what are your rights? Uh, the constitution and hijacking of America is kind of, in, that's a kind of interesting chapter. The American Bill of Rights, the forgotten American Ninth Amendment, and then says if legal disputes arise, what you should be doing, uh, the fully informed jury, and then there's some sample forms uh, for those that are uh, unlicensed as far as uh, uh, medical uh, are concerns. So this is a worthwhile little booklet uh, to have uh, and to read through and not just to have it to read through and understand. So here from letter 66, 1901 says, natural means used in accordance with God's will bring about supernatural results. We ask for a miracle and the Lord directs the mind to some simple remedy. We ask to be kept from the pe uh, pestilence that walketh in darkness, that is stalking with such power through the world. We are, are then to cooperate with God, okay? Observing the laws of health and life. Having done all that we possibly can, we are to keep asking in faith for health and strength. We, we are to eat that food which will preserve the health of the body. God gives us no encouragement that he will do for us what we can do for ourselves. So see, that's the thing, we can't just I uh, think that God, if we get ourselves in these these uh, straight situations, that God's going to take us out. No, he wants us to learn how to uh, do for ourselves with God's help, but we have to do our part. It says natural laws are to be obeyed. We are not to fail of doing our part. God says to us, work out what? Your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Going on says, we cannot disregard the laws of nature without disregarding the laws of God. We cannot expect the Lord to work a miracle for us while we neglect the simple remedies. He has provided for our use, which aptly and opportunely applied will bring about a miraculous result. Therefore, we must pray, believe, and work in combination um, together. So just a little encouragement. Let me take a drink real quick. It says, for attractive lips, speak words of kindness. For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. To lose weight, let go of stress, hatred, and anger. Discontentment and the need to control others. To improve your ears, listen to the word of God. For poise, Walk with knowledge and self-esteem. To strengthen your arms, hug at least three people a day. Touch someone with your love. And it's amazing how when we're there to help other people, how the actually in turn, it will be a blessing and a benefit to us. So to strengthen your heart, forgive yourself and others. For the ultimate in business and casual or even entire, put on the robe of Christ. If it's like a glove, but allows room for growth. Best of all, it never goes out of style and it's appropriate for any occasion. And if we do these things on a daily basis, we will certainly make you a more beautiful person at all. So we got to look at the good at others and praise God for any and every opportunity that he's given us. So now let's look at detoxification that everyone can do even in their home. So we're going to look at the seven elimination channels uh, uh, of the body. One, the colon, the liver, the kidneys, the lung, 
the skin, the blood system, and lymph lymphatic system. Says why, <clears throat> uh, I asked the question, why do you need to cleanse? Well, says we are a nation of constipation, stagnation, brutification, fermentation, and auto intoxication society, really. Says medical doctors report that less than 50% of Americans have a daily bowel movement. And in fact, there is no medical reason to have a bowel movement every day. The National Digestive Disease Information Clearinghouse states that, th that three bowel movements a day to three a week is normal. While the FDA reports that the average American male may be carrying an unbelievable five to 22 uh, pounds of fecal material or matter in him on any given day. So this is why we're having these, these problems and these diseases. And this is why it's important for us to learn what we need to do uh, to cleanse ourselves, detox and all that. It says the European, the, the European Journal of Cancer reported in 2004 that constipation raises your risk of having colon cancer. But very few people realize that there are two types of constipation. The first is infrequent elimination when you cannot have a bowel movement, okay? So this is, you know, when you're not going on a daily basis. The other one, which most people are familiar, is when the colon wall becomes encrusted with hardened mucus and fecal matter, narrowing the aperture of the colon and resulting in pencil-like stools, meaning you're not, you know, it's, it's not coming out like it should, it should be. This is called mucoviscitis or intestinal mucin and can have consistency of like trunk uh, tin rubber and be the home that where parasites live and thrive and, and, and grow. So why should we cleanse? Here it says, when the body takes in toxins faster than it can eliminate them, symptoms develop producing disease. In order to prevent and reverse this, we must, here's the key, first, detoxify all the elimination organs, the body, the bowel, liver, kidneys, lungs, skin, the blood and lymphatic system as we saw, and rejuvenate, we've got to look at rejuvenating the body. Uh, this <clears throat> is the foundation of healing. When toxins are removed from the body and, and tissues, what needs to heal will heal them. So we've got to get the trash out of the, the, the system. Now, moving to a vegetarian or vegan diet, that's very good. But a lot of times when people are dealing with health issues, that's a slow process and that, that they have a challenge doing, uh, uh, getting the results and many people get discouraged and they give up. So there's many <clears throat> different symptoms that you never thought associated with toxic colon soon improve and disappear. This is why a lot of people are, they're not interested, um, in, you know, in letting nature uh, through patience and time to do its course. And they want a quick fix, quick, quick answers and stuff like that. And it's, it's taken people years to get sick and it's gonna take a while. We don't know by God's grace, hopefully it's not gonna be years, but usually it takes days to weeks to possibly months for, for them to be able to reverse uh, these, these unhealthy conditions and stuff. So <clears throat> what we have to do is one, cleanse the body. So in every process of healing and recovery, whether dealing with cancer to high blood pressure, one must cleanse the body of all impurities. Simply changing your diet to a veg vegetarian vegan diet while helpful and necessary is a very slow process as I just mentioned in the healing process. The body still is eliminating the toxins that have accumulated over years, but are being removed in a very slow process. Aggressively and properly cleansing the, uh, the body will assist the immune system in fighting back the infection or the disease. So you got to uh, get this uh, system cleaned out. The other thing is we must nourish the body. Once the body has been properly cleansed, the proper foods must be provided. In most cases, this would be live nutritious foods, foods such as raw meals to allow the body the mineral, the trace minerals and all the live enzymes to be able to heal it itself. Is, so we got to nourish it with the right type of foods. Number three, the body will then heal itself. But when we put, put the right foods, the right fuel into it, it says um, when the first two steps are faithfully followed, then through patience, faith, and trust in God, time and consistency, then the body will properly heal itself. And that's, that's the key is 
we've got to be patient. We are, we are very impatient. And we've got to be faithful. We've got to trust that God knows what he's doing. We've got to let time as well. And we've got to be consistent, continuing uh, what we've learned, doing it on a daily uh, basis. Number four says, establish then a low toxic environment. And this not just means the foods that we're eating, we've got to eliminate things that are bad, but we've got to stay away from people that are negative, very toxic. We've got to stay away from environments and stuff that, that can affect our health as well or has been affecting our health. It says, after investing the time and money in cleansing your body, one must establish a low toxic environment. This involves eliminating improper foods, such as cleaning supplies as well, laundry detergents, and in some cases, your, your work or even your living environment, um, it poses a danger uh, to your life. So we've got to examine everything and not eliminate uh, anything out of our, our healing process. And then number five says maintain a healthy lifestyle. Once completing these steps, it is important to realize that you have made a lifestyle change and that maintenance is important to stay healthy. So um, you know, there is an investment, there's time, there's money, there's all these things. And so therefore it's learning to maintain your, your new lifestyle, your new health, uh, health patterns as well. So let's look at what disease is and says in the ministry of healing it says disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. And that's what disease is, is that we've um, it's just our, our body's trying to eliminate these things out of our system. And so we must uh, learn how, uh, what we can do to assist it as well. So what we, how we do this is what uh, an acronym that, I, that uh, years ago, the Lord impressed me called lifestyles. It's the eight laws of health as most people are familiar with, but there's two other ones. And so live nutritious foods is one of the, the fact, the things that we need to teach is getting more of a plant-based, more even of a raw diet, uh, increase the, the right raw diet in our daily consumption. Um, and that way we will start seeing improved change as well. So, and so nutrition says food must be selected to provide the nutrients the body requires rather than to indulge appetite. If we are to enjoy good health, it says flesh meats are concentrated foods says man's original diet in Genesis 1 29 is very adequate without the risk of animal transmitted diseases. So not only do we need to give up meats and uh, the, the dairies and the cheeses and the fish and all of that stuff, but anything of that is of a byproduct from an animal source, we've got to eliminate it from our diet as well. It says people are continually eating flesh that is filled with tuberculosis and cancerous germs. Tuberculosis, cancer, and other fatal disease are thus communicated. So when we're eating these uh, 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 these diseased animals, then it's communicated to us. It says the tissues of the swine swarm with parasites. In many places, fish become so contaminated by the filth upon which they feed as to be the cause of uh, the disease. So these are, again, the things that we've got to learn to eliminate from our lifestyle. And what we have found that over the years, the more that people are eating uh, these uh, animal products, that we were seeing that an earlier onset of puberty back in 1875, uh, during the time of uh, Ellen White was alive, the puberty back then was around, as you see the chart here at eight, uh, 16 and a half. In 1974, it had dropped down to 12.2. A uh, more recent report that I've read is actually has dropped down to anywhere from seven uh, to nine years of age. So we're not improving our lifestyle. We're digressing uh, in, a, in a quick succession. So we got to do what we can to reverse these things. So we're going to look at nutrition here. It says food guide pyramid. Number one, eat a wide variety of fruits, grain, vegetables, legumes, seeds, and nuts. That should be our basis. Um, the other thing is um, avoid protein from animal sources. We need to look at limiting fat, sugar, and salt as well, uh, especially from uh, unnatural sources. Eat a good breakfast, a moderate lunch, and a light supper. Allow at least five hours between meals and eat meals at the same time each day. Be consistent on all that. And don't eat between meals uh, as well because it actually does interrupt your digestive process.
process because actually when you're eating your breakfast and two hours later, if you eat a snack, then it stops the digestive process, starts it all over again. And this is where we, a lot of times we have heartburns or gas or things of that nature. So nutrition says the facts are that meat and animal products can be linked directly or indirectly to about 90% of the physical problems and the deaths in America. 50% of all Americans die from heart attacks and strokes, and this should not be. This, the numbers are way too high. 33% of all Americans die from, from cancer. 8% of all the Americans die or is attributed to diabetes. One of the things is, is again, this is, um, to me, is a, is a low number because if you have diabetes, it is, can be a precursor to um, a heart disease and all that, or it can be a precursor to other issues. And so therefore, they're not given the actual numbers of uh, directly that are uh, related because of diabetes and stuff. So on a uh, daily uh, basis, if you're doing a detox, it's, I encourage people to get on, on a pH strips to, to determine what your pH is because um, that way you will know if you're moving toward an acid or an alkaline um, um, base uh, diet and if your body is responding to it as well. And what this, this allows you to do is if um, the best way is to actually get your blood taken, uh, get a phlebotomist, have them test it. And if, if it's uh, arterially, your blood is uh, supposed to be 7.3 to 7.5, then that you're a little bit alkaline. You can be too alkaline and it can be dangerous. But if, if it's showing that you're an you know, acid, um, then this is where you've got to eliminate some of the foods that are in your diet. Um, and increase your alkaline foods as well. Uh, and therefore that way you're gonna have better, better blood that will also prevent you having uh, different types of diseases. So again, it's getting a pH strip. Now, if you can't get um, a phlebotomist or get your blood taken and tested, then you can just get what most people are doing is just the saliva or urine test. And then those tests need to be at at, at, at least a 7.0 and it's fre uh, first um, so a saliva test first thing in the morning before you brush your teeth or anything of that nature. The same thing first first urine in the morning to be able to uh, get your pH uh, and all. So here's a little chart here: um, pH at saliva 7.0 or uh, arteria at least at closer to or toward a 7.5. So. What I just shared with you, basically, this is what these slides are. First, upon waking, test your saliva with a pH hydrogen paper. When you get out of bed, lick and wet the end of the pH hydrogen test. Stir it with your sal uh, saliva. Note the color change and write down the pH number. Do this before brushing your teeth, drinking, smoking, or even th thinking of eating any food. The optimum saliva pH should be at a 7.2. The second, test your first urine of the morning, this urine that has been stored in your bladder during the night that is ready to be eliminated when you get up. You need to pee on a strip of pH hydrogen paper. Note the color change and write it down. Again, the first urine should be optimally be between 6.8 and normally urine will be a little bit acid in, in, in the morning, but it, it can be up a little bit alkaline as well. So it says if your first urine pH is lower than 6.8, you are deficient in alkaline buffers and need to move to a more alkaline diet, rich in fresh green vegetables and fruits. But if your uh, first urine is higher than 7.2, your alkaline buffers are sufficient to neutralize the acidic foods. And um, uh, uh, um, so there, therefore you're, you're, you should be safe and all that. So uh, third test your second morning urine before eat, eating any food. This number should be the pH of your second urine. Um, and so the reason we do this and suggest to do it a couple of times is to make sure that to see what your, your average uh, pH are, should be in the, in, the, for, in the morning. And so, again, if you're looking to do to try to do something like a cleansing or trying to do uh, something where, like you're juicing, then uh, it's good to, to see where your pH is going to be. Um, number four, for breakfast, eat an avocado soup, vegetable soup the healing soup or, or drink some fresh almond milk or a fresh green drink. Uh, then what you wanna do is wait five minutes after you've uh, drank this and then take uh, your, your, your uh, urine and your saliva uh, after that. Um, 
to see what what if it has changed any at all or what have you. And then number five, make sure you check your urine and saliva pH between meals. Um, and this is again, it's gonna it's gonna take some time and some investment in doing this, but you you will be uh, benefited and blessed because of that. Because then that way, after the seven days or ten days, however long you're wanting to try to do this juicing or cleansing, then you will have an optimal understanding as to what you need to be eating on a daily basis. So here's an Acalarian diet. It says health benefits on your body, improves your memory and, and uh, cognition promotes cardiovascular health, uh, boosts your immune system, uh, better digestion, prevents cancers, keeps your bones and muscles healthy as you're looking to eat more of an alkaline-based diet and stuff. And so here's some acid forming foods like uh, they include, you know, um, grains, beans, meats, dairy products, fish, fast foods, processed foods as well. So there are some grains that by pH standard, they are a little bit acid in, in, in beans. But uh, alkaline forming are like fruits and vegetables, herbs and nuts, seeds, herbal teas. If you drink like, you know, lemon, lemon juice in the morning or lime juice, though by pH they're an acid, it actually helps alkalinize your body. So here's another one um, that gives you a little bit some more foods like cheeses and porks and what have you, their pH and all that. Something that's neutral. Uh, most uh, tap water would encourage you drinking it, but it is uh, butter, brown rice, basmati rice, uh, raw milk and coconut milk. So you can see uh, by pH and, and all that, but also um, things such as eggs and all that, I would definitely eliminate. But then as you get more alkaline, you can see that uh, things like butter and all that are not on that more alkaline forming foods, um, raw celeries, carrots and stuff, Brussels sprouts, lemons, um, you know, raw broccolis and asparagus, that those are higher in alkaline uh, uh, buffering foods and, and it would in, it encourage you to increase that <clears throat> if you're more of an, uh, of an, an acid uh, pH uh, when you first start. So. So as a physician once said, the best medicine for humans is love. Someone asked, what if it doesn't work? He smiled and said, increase the dose. So it's very interesting. I, I think that I find that very, uh, very encouraging. And so we've got to increase the dose of our love for, for one another. Here's a little thing that I, uh, a lot of times I hand out to our guests and says, the most important organ says, one day the body organs got together and decided to have a board meeting. Here's what went on behind closed doors. There was intense discussion to determine who was the most important part of the body. And it says the brain was the first to speak. Without me, nothing would be accomplished. Then the heart spoke up. Without me pumping blood to your brain, you could not function. The arms laughed. You're both wrong. Without me to put food in the mouth, nothing would work. The stomach said, without me, your food would not digest. The lungs bellow back. Without us, you cannot breathe. The eyes blink. Without me, you cannot see. The kidney snorted. Without me, you cannot detoxify and, and eliminate. Then the colon meekly spoke up. I'm important. You need me to eliminate all of the garbage from your systems. Everyone laughed and made fun of him. How can you be as important as we are? You're just a smelly old sewer. The poor colon, his feelings were hurt. He turned away and thought, I'll show them. So he shut down. Then he sat back and watched what happened. The brain was stupefied. The heart's beat was weak and irregular. The arms were weak and couldn't move. The <clears throat> lungs gave in to shallow breathing. The eyes became clouded. The kidneys quit. The colon looked around and decided it was time to call another meeting. It wasn't too lightly this time but everyone was in total agreement the colon was the most important organ this is why we got to learn what we uh, what we need to do to have uh, uh to care for our, for our colon because otherwise yes everything else does back up back up and we can get grumpy as well um, and so we have to learn what we need to do to make sure we're eliminating every day in 1 Corinthians 3, we're told, says, Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. We're told, 
or asked which temple are 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 ye. And so we got to understand that our bodies um, are belong to God, and we're just to um, maintain them and and keep them. It says. 1 Corinthians 9, do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live what? Of the gospel. So when we're, when we're preaching the gospel, then the gospel we, we are preaching, we should live as well. The Corinthians were told, be ye not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believed with the infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We're then told, wherefore, come out from among them and what? Be ye separate. And this is the same thing. Let's not follow the diet of the rest of the world. We are to be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So we got to come out from among the, the, the world, worldliness and all that. Be careful what you eat, brothers and sisters. We got to be careful what we put into our bodies and all. So let's look at some problems with this, uh, stu- um, with our stomach and all that. This is the first elimination channel that we- I talked about that we're going to try to cover. The consequences of an improper colon, colon maintenance. So what happens is um, constipation is caused primarily by insufficient dietary fiber and water. This is why a lot of times, yes, we're constipated because we're not eating the fiber, we're not drinking the, the, the um, fluid that we need. And so we can see here in this, this chart here that our ascending, transcending, and descending colon can have different things from an adhesion to colitis to, to diverticulitis. We can have tapeworms, bacteria infections, uh, and cancers can be setting in, or we can have polyps within our colon. And so this is not necessarily something that everybody can have at the same time, but these are uh, where these uh, different health problems, diseases uh, actually start uh, developing in our colon. And so you can see hopefully this picture here of uh, on the right, that this is kind of a standard, you know, a nice clean colon, but on the the uh, I'm sorry on on the left your left and then and then the right you can see the screen there that this one is a uh, someone has a constipated colon and he's not able to eliminate like he should in, in properly and so the consequences of improper uh, colon maintenance so here's um, I know that um, um, this may be kind of interesting to some you all or disgusting but. Um, we need to understand and discuss this because it helps us uh, realize what we're dealing with when we're going to be working with individuals or you may have these these problems like type one um, they're separate hard lumps like nuts difficult to pass indicates constipation type two like a sausage shaped but lumpy indicates constipation again type three sausage shape with surface cracks ideal stools as easier to pass and all that. Then we get type four, sausage safe, smooth and soft, ideal stools, again, easier to pass. So three and four are getting better. Look at five. Soft blobs with clear cut edges may indicate uh, diarrhea and urgency, meaning you're gonna be going to the bathroom more often. Type six, fluffy pieces with ragged edges. A mushy stool may indicate diarrhea and urgency. And then number seven is like a watery, no solids, entire liquid. Uh, again, may indicate diarrhea and urgency. So really the one that you uh, are looking, strive for is number three and, and number four type of, of a stool. So number two is diarrhea may be caused by a temporary problem like an infection or chronic problem like an intestinal disease. It says a few of the more common causes of diarrhea include viral, bacterial, or parasitic infections, food intolerance, reactions to medicine, intestinal disease, and or functional bowel disorders could be causing uh, uh, diarrhea.
Number three, hemorrhoids, also known as piles, are dilated veins in the anus and rectum. They are caused by insufficient dietary fiber and by straining during um, by elim elimination. If you're having a strain, then you do, you know, have a problem, um, a, a colon uh, um, uh, situation where you need to increase your fiber, increase, again, water. We're not drinking the water like we should. Uh, appendicitis refers to inflammation and infection of the appendix. It is caused by the low fiber intake and lack of good bacteria as well. So if <clears throat> you, you're having this issue, again, with appendicitis, it may t uh, necessitate taking an acidophilus or something like a par parabolic where it, you're putting good, the good bacteria back in your intestinal uh, tract. Number five is colitis, also known as irritable bowel syndrome or spastic colon, is when the inner lining of the colon becomes inflamed. So this over time, the infl there's an uh, inf inflation, uh, inflammation and all that. And says it is the most frequently seen gastrointestinal disease and highly related to stress as well. So you you have a, lot, a stressful situation. Uh, ulcer alterated colitis is a more severe form of this disease in which ulcers or sores appear in the lining of the colon. And there can be sometimes the colon inside of the colon, the mucosa lining can be scratched and you can get some bleeding sometimes from it. Even though it is caused largely by stress, a healthy bowel, including all the factors mentioned above, can help protect us from this uh, colitis problem. Number six is uh, diverticulosis. Uh, is an uh, outward ballooning uh, diverticula in the bowel wall, meaning you may think that you have gas or whatever, but normally kind of protrudes on one side uh, um, by increased internal pressure and weakening the bowel wall. Is caused by chronic constipation, meaning there you're constantly, um, for usually for several years, having problems going to the bathroom. This is why some people usually uh, rely on some type of uh, clonics or, or enemas and all that, which then actually weakens your ability to um, uh, for your colon to actually. Um, uh, um, do what's called a, a peristalsis, where it actually pushes the the bowel out of your system, and so then your your colon, bec your intestine becomes weak, um, or it just basically just stops functioning and all that. So we got to be careful. It says if diverticula becomes inflamed, it is called diver diverticulitis. Another one is a prolapsed colon. That's a common condition that occurs when the colon falls from its normal position to a lower position. It's called caused by a general deterioration of, of the colon. Uh, and as a result, then you end up having poor colon hygiene. The real problem occurs when the abdominal organs, including the colon, exert pressure on the prostate in men and the uterus and, and, uh, uh, and the ovaries in, in the women and all that. So you don't uh, want to get to this prolapsed colon. So number eight, dilated blood vessels such as varicose veins often cause like hemorrhoids by increased internal pressure result from straining during bowel elimination. If you're having a strain, then you need to be looking at something. Again, the fiber is the, normally the issue and not enough water intake. Um, if you're having it to, to uh, strain in, in a bowel movement, it should come out naturally first thing in the morning. Um, the other thing is skin problems. You'll start having skin problems if you're having poor colon health. Some toxins um, are eliminated through the sweat pores. And so um, there can be some um, skin uh, blemishes and stuff like that because of our, our colon being um, constipated. Number 10, again, we can have halitosis or bad breath as a result from colon problems in the same way. Again, we're, we're, we are... Um, being, uh, we are constipated, therefore, a lot of times we that's why we have halitosis. And number 11 is something definitely we want to avoid is cancer. Um, um, you know, 80 or, or more percent of cancer you just start in the colon because of these problems of constipation, of, of, of not of improper elimination. And so, again, we've got to <clears throat> be serious about our health, especially our, our colon health. So signs of a healthy colon now. So I shared with you what you could look at of having a bad uh, colon. Uh, regular bowel movements with a frequency of anywhere from one to three times per day. 
normally, again, like we talked about last last night, is um, if you, when you first wake up, um, you should, within the first 30 minutes to an hour, should need to go to the bathroom and have a good bowel movements and all that. If you happen to, if you're able to have one or two more a day, then that's that's even better. Um, ease, easy, uh, relaxed bowel movements. Uh, if you have to strain and working up to a sweat should not be necessary. You shouldn't be straining uh, to, to have have to go to the restroom. Uh, stool color should be like of a walnut uh, brown. Uh, temporary discoloration may occur from like foods such as carrots and beets, and, uh, dark green vegetables, uh, um, commute or, you know, um, a wheatgrass, things of that nature that will, uh, but on a normal basis, it should be kind of like a walnut brown. Stool consistency is similar to toothpaste and about the length of a banana. Stool should never be hard and, and pellet shaped. Um, they, we should have minimal gas when we're eating. If we have gas, normally it's because of the wrong combinations of foods. We could be eating too fast as well. And so, again, you know, we should have minimal gas. Um, discomfort as well. So steps to a healthy cone. So if you don't have a healthy cone, what can you do? Pure water. And that's, that's key. Uh, pure clean water is essential for colon health. Drink alkaline purified or reverse osmosis water. Uh, divide your body by weight normally. So if you're 200 pounds, half uh, uh, of that in ounces. So if you're 200 pounds, drink at least 100 ounces, preferably even more. Uh, one to two classes um, a day. So you're going to be hydrating. Proper diet, eat a low fat, high fiber diet of whole foods. Um, again, eat God's foods, avoid man's processed foods. Fiber, eat plenty of raw whole fruits and vegetables. And also include fresh nuts and whole grains. If additional fiber is needed, try fiber supplements such as psyllium. Psyllium is uh, high in fiber. And uh, you can take it for a while until your body gets to the to the plateau that it needs. Reduce your stress. Um, do things that will help relax you, whether it's walking, whether it's listening to heavenly music, um, whether if it's you know getting some sleep. Those things are taking a nice uh, hot bath in the evening. Uh, don't try to over uh, you know work yourself or stress yourself trying to get everything done, you know, in, in one day. But you know leave your cares and burdens uh, with Christ. Exercise, get moderate exercise five days per, per week at least. And what you want to do is at least 20 to 30 minutes of consistent walking to increase your um, body temperature, increase your <clears throat> blood pressure as well. And even if you can sweat, that would be even better. Uh, also eat things that are like friendly bacteria, avoid uh, antibiotics and other drugs. Drugs often kill friendly bacteria in your colon, especially antibiotics. Fermented vessels such as sauerkraut and soybeans um, are natural uh, probiotics. Uh, so probiotic supplementation uh, is another way to restore your colon uh, uh, with friendly bacterial bacteria. And then uh, one of the things you can do in, is if you have never experienced is doing a detoxification, doing a colon uh, cleanse. Um, I would suggest doing this once a year at least. If you can't do it twice, these are the products that we we use. Um, now we make our own when our guests come, but this is uh, Dr. Christopher's uh, number one and number two uh, 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 quick colon cleanse to be able to help clean up your colon. You'll feel much better. Will allow you not only to start um, you know, detoxifying your body, but it also uh, increase uh, your ability for for your body to absorb the nutrients, the foods that you're eating, because your colon is being cleaned out. It says this product aids the elimination of the buildup of the lower bowels. This product is a powder containing flaxseed, apple pectin, slippery elm bark, marshmallow root, fennel seed, and and, and uh, willow and charcoal as well. So we, we've used this for over 20 years and very effective and powerful. Here's some of the results of some of our guests. Hope it doesn't um, uh, yuck you all out, but um, by being able to clean the colon, this is some uh, picture that one of our guests allowed us to, to, to take a picture of to help you understand the importance of uh, cleaning the colon. And so before using the colon cleanse, this is kind of a 
um, picture of what a person's colon may look like. But after doing a nice healthy colon cleanse and all that, getting your, your colon in, in proper, then there's no buildup, there's no constipation, there's no gas, and, and this is what we need to work toward. Now, again, how long does this take to, to uh, clean the colon out? It, it, it may take one, you know, 10 day uh, colon cleanse, it may take, may take two. So, but it, the key is, is, is working toward uh, having a, a good healthy colon. Now, I wanna talk about this and may be controversial with some people, but dangers of a colonics. Um, we've experienced this before. We've experienced it with a lady that actually used the clonics on her, her father and some others that have used it and that they ruptured and, and uh, damaged the, the person's colon. Uh, colon irrigation, also known as uh, colonic hydrotherapy, involves flushing waste matter out of the bowel using water. The problem is, is that the clonics um, usually only clean out about three to five feet of this. So this can cause dehydration, uh, removing healthy microflora because usually it's at the end of the colon um, from and upsetting the uh, delicate balance that ensures good colon health, sodium and potassium. So the colon cleanses can potentially invite unhealthy bacteria into the lower digestive system with the instruments and fluids used. They also remove the healthy bacteria that can fight uh, infections as well. Uh, the other thing there, there are causes is like dizziness, vomiting, nausea, cramps, bowel perforation, meaning the colon uh, puncture. And this is what happened to a friend of ours and has happened to some others. Uh, infections can set in, uh, electric light imbalance, kidney damages, um, pancreatitis, uh, tummy pain and, and cramping usually are always um, uh, happens uh, when someone has finished uh, doing a, a colonics. Uh, fullness and bloating, diarrhea, anal, ir anal irritation and soreness, uh, bowel movement problems usually after this happens for several days they're not able to, to go eliminate properly. It says if you do a colonic don't expect a bowel movement the next day depending on your condition it may take several days before normal bowel movements resume. Avoid rigorous exercise and weightlifting for 24 hours after this, this happens. So this is never um, a joy, joyful uh, uh, process and all that. So why should the food reside residue remain in the colon 40 or more hours? This, this and, um, says considering that the colon's function is to eliminate this waste and that the absorption of nutrients was completed in the small intestine. This unnecessary delay creates the opportunity for putrefactive poisons to develop, and these poisons are the prime factors in the development of uh, chronic disease. The reason I put this on here is to help you understand that a vegetarian vegan diet, the normal transit time when we eat, it should be anywhere from 12 to 24 hours that we should be eliminating the food that we've, we've eaten. People that eat meat, it could be 72, 100, or sometimes even more before most of the residue, uh, most of the, the food that was eaten is eliminated out of the system other than there is residues that go into blood system. Cheeses, things of that nature usually take 38 to 48 hours um, or more. And what causes uh, then is constipation also for parasites and diseases to be set up. So this is why we've eating a plant-based, encouraging a plant-based diet will help us eliminate and not set up diseases in our colon and other places in our, in our body. So it says the time that is required for the food to travel from the start of the digestive system until elimination is called transit time. Any transit time that is no longer than 24 hours is what's called constipation. And also if it takes more than 24 hours to eliminate what you've eaten, then you, you're, you're constipated. It says the average transit time in America is 72 hours. In Australia, it is 41 hours. In Africa, it's 36 hours. So the transit time is directly related to the percentage of chronic disease in any given country and all that. So here's the following list of complaints that occur from occasional constipation. Coated tongue, foul breath, indigestion, dizziness, constant fatigue, loss of pep, muddy complexion, acne, insomnia, nervousness, absent-mindedness, inability to concentrate, 
mental depression, headaches, migraines, gallstones, arthritis, diabetes, high blood pressures, and also the fear is, is, is cancers and stuff. So this is, again, um, things that we want to eliminate and reverse. So we're gonna look at some stomach irritants. Uh, hot pepper, black or red, and spices like cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg are, are cataloged uh, as uh, stomach irritants. Um, vinegar and anything made with vinegar like pickles, mayonnaise, and ketchup, things of that nature to avoid. Foods having a fermenting, putrefying, or writing phase in processing such as sauerkrauts and cheese, soy sauce, and similar products we need to, to avoid because otherwise then when we're trying to uh, have a normal transit time, this will uh, have an irritating effect in our colon. Baking sodas, baking powder products, including all commercial crackers, cookies, donuts, and other bakery products we've got to avoid. Caffeine, you know, coffees, teas, and colas, uh, anything with nicotine or thromium, which are like chocolates and stuff we've got to avoid from our uh, daily lifestyle and our diets and stuff. Drinking with meals is also uh, can be a stomach irritant as the digestion and stomach emptying are both delayed. Uh, beverages such as soups, juices, and milk should all be avoided as well when you're eating hard foods. Stagnation in the stomach is one of the, of the commonest cause of ulcers and gastritis. Further, milk contains much lactose, the milk sugar that produces fermentation and the production of irritating tox toxic chemicals. Milk is the cause of more food sensitivity than any other food as well. And this is why as parents, if we have uh, newborn babies, we need to wait to give them and feed them hard foods until two years, because this is why there's a growing um, or should be increase of people that have uh, Crohn's disease and celiac, because one, one of the major factors is that they were given foods uh, too early that were hard foods uh, before two years of age and stuff. Number seven, late evening meals, eating late at night. We shouldn't be doing that, eating too much. Most people could get uh, by with uh, well within half to two thirds less than they presently uh, consume on a daily basis and stuff. So we do have a problem of, of eating too much. One thing that I found, you know, um, is if people that are overweight and they're trying to lose weight, one, you know, many get discouraged from trying to lose weight. Um, something that I've uh, found is uh, chelated chromium that actually helps uh, uh, not only people that are di diabetics, but people that are trying to lose weight, if they take uh, that on a daily basis, uh, consistent, and may, again, it may take months, um, but it, it will reduce the, the, the amount of food that they're eating. It would actually increase the, uh, their metabolism as well, and therefore, over time, they start losing weight. Um, I'm kind of a perfect example because I, I used to, um, yeah, I'm just not sure what happened here. Hold on, sorry about that. Um, but anyways, over the years, I, you know, I gained weight to 200, about 236 pounds, and now I'm at 180. And so by doing this, I've not tried to lose weight. I just was not eating the breakfast like I should. Um, I was taking the chelated chromium, and over time, I, I've, I've lost 56 pounds and stuff. So um, it's yeah, lose, trying to be on a diet is stressful. And a lot of times I've found that people that are trying to get on a diet, uh, that's part of their stress. Instead of just enjoying life and making some adjustments and then giving themselves time, they will lose the weight. So let's continue on here, I think. All right, sorry about that. Going on, chewing too little. That masticating is very important because you want to break down as much, uh, the food as much as you can before you swallow it. Uh, eating too fats, bites too large, using a third uh, of the fork or, or, or smaller, even a fourth a spoonful is, is going to be more advantageous for you. 
Uh, foods rich with refined sugars, refined oils, or concentrated proteins, such as heavy meat substitutes. Um, you know, the meat substitutes were originally developed to help people transition from a meat diet to a plant-based diet, but we have uh, have actually abused it. Um, the other thing is um, the more concentrated the food, the more likely to irritate the stomach as well. So eating fruits and vegetables at the same, at the same meal is not uh, encouraged. Foods that contain combinations of milk and eggs, milk and sugars, or eggs and sugars, uh, unripe or overripe fruits as well. A lot of people um, eat um, bananas that have been bruised and all that. That's high in sugars, but you know that that's not uh, advisable. Uh, so we've got to be careful uh, of the fruits and all that that are overripe or even underripe as well. Foods that are taken while they are are too hot or too cold. Uh, crowded meals closer than, together than five hours apart and all that to give the body time to di uh, digest the, the foods, our meals. And so again, go back to the colon one and colon two. It's very important uh, to use this because it's going to be helpful to eliminate and get your colon cleaned out and all that. Um, here's just the instruction. Uh, quick colon form one, take one ca uh, capsule per day and you keep increasing it. Uh, until you get, if you're going to the bathroom one time a day, you want at least to increase it to two to three, and, or if you're going two, two times a day, three to four times a day is what you want. The quick colon number two, this, the powder here, uh, take one level teaspoon of powder with four to six ounces of fresh juice or water uh, three times a day uh, until the bottle is empty or max of 10 days. Normally that one will last you at least uh, 10 days if sometimes you might be able to get two out of it. And so when you're doing this, it's, it's suggested that you also try to juice to give the increase, um, uh, your body the increase ability to, to uh, get the colon cleaned out like it, like it needs to be. So let's look at uh, juicing. Um, I encourage people to juice one day a week for 24 hours. Um, there's different levels of, of juicing. Um, but what the purpose of the juicing is to actually shut their digestive system down, give it a break, because anytime you eat a meal, about 65% of the, your energy goes to your, your stomach, your intestines to try to break the food down. So if you're juicing, you reduce it from 65 down to 5 to 10% to digest the food, and the rest of the energy can be used to, uh, for healing and repair and all that. So, so there's new evidence from cardiac research at the uh, Health Institute at Intermont Medical Center in Utah suggests that routine periodic fasting is good for health and specifically our heart because it reduces the weight and levels of sugars and triglycerides in the blood. The results explain, uh, expand upon a 2007 Intermountain Healthcare study showing a direct uh, association between fasting and a reduced risk of coronary heart failure. The findings were presented at the 2011 annual scientific sessions of the American College of Cardiology in New Orleans. So they found that, yes, by, you know, um, intermittent uh, routine fastings and stuff like that, juice fasting, that you will uh, reduce the strain on the heart. You will increase, uh, actually, after you're, when you juice, you'll see the clarity of mind. You will have even more energy and all that, plus you reduce heart disease, all, all sorts of different types of disease, reduce the risk of diabetes as well, reduce, um, reduce the, the risk of also uh, different types of arthritis and all that, uh, just have a, you know, increased healthy, uh, healthier lifestyle. So 10 reasons to juice, it's cleansing and alkalinizing. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we're wanting to move to an alkalarian diet. And so you do this with green leafy vegetables and grasses are the most cleansing and alkalizing to the body. So get wheatgrass, alfalfa, um, um, something like a spirulina. Those are all good superfoods. It says by juicing them, you are giving your body what it needs to balance your pH level and keep yourself in optimal health. Number two, by juicing, you also have um, these beautiful enzymes. Freshly extracted juices are the best source of live enzymes. So the little foams and stuff from fresh um, you juicing, you want to you know, um, lap that up as well because those are great live enzymes. Number three, there's nutrients, vitamins and minerals in a higher concentration. 
juice vegetables provide your body with a high amounts of absorbable chlorophyll, amino acids, um, minerals, vitamins, and photonutrients as well. It's also easier to digest and to absorb uh, because it's already been broke, broken down, so it doesn't take so much to, to break it down to get it into the blood system. Juicing takes the strain off the digestive system. By extracting the juice from the, the fiber, it pre-digests the fruits and vegetables, um, making the nutrients more readily available for easy absorption. Fiber in the diet is important, though <clears throat> you, you do, you, you know, what you want to do is you drink your vegetables and kind of interesting, eat your, eat your fruits and all that. Number five, it's easier to consume. It says years of eating nutritionally deficient food means that a lot of alkalinities and green foods are needed to rebalance our bodies. We couldn't eat enough greens to address this imbalance. Juicing provides a simple and effective way to get maximum goodness into the body without having to graze on grass all uh, day long. So when we juice, we can get it into a higher concentration than our body's needs. This also will also help with true hydration. As you know, the planet is 70% water and so is our bodies. Our blood consists of 94% water. So foods in their natural and raw state have uh, a high water content. So by drinking these water-rich fruit vegetable juices, we can ensure and enjoy proper hydration. Because again, it's going back to making sure we're getting the fluid, the water that we need on a daily basis. Um, also has antioxidants. Um, green juice provides the body with huge amounts of antioxidants. Antioxidants uh, fortify our immune system and stop our bodies from basically rusting from the inside out. So it gives you the antioxidants that you need. And especially in the last couple of years, um, with the whole scare of the COVID and all that, when we have antioxidant, antioxidant will fight back um, any type of uh, of COVID or, or these other strains that are being promoted out there uh, that are, are affecting people. So antioxidant is very is a good buffering, a good a natural antibiotic uh, toward these. Delivers oxygen to your cells. When our bodies <clears throat> are acidic, the red blood cells clump together and oxygen cannot get to all the cells. Juicing alkalinizes the blood and that the red blood cells can flow freely once again and deliver oxygen to each and every cell in your body. When your body is charged with oxygen, your mind is clear and sharp and you feel very much energized, as I said earlier. This uh, juicing also is disease prevention. It says it is no coincidence that the uh, uh, that strong therapeutic green vegetable sprout and grass juices form the cornerstone of every successful disease prevention center and clinic around the world. Many clinics have been moving for the last 20 years that we've been involved in, in a lot of lifestyle work. They're moving toward a, a encouraging, promoting juicing and all that. And that's where, that's why I put on there every successful disease prevention or even people that are working with people that have diff these different diseases are moving toward a uh, juicing uh, lifestyle. Also, juicing is very calming. So the magnesium and chlorophyll in green juices soothes and calms the nervous system and minimizes stress uh, uh, in the body. So what we suggest doing is uh, one day per week for 24 hours or three to four days per month in a straight three or three or four days per month. So because like I mentioned, normal digestion takes 55 to 60 percent of the body's energy. By juicing, it reduces this five to five to ten percent, thus allowing for the body to rebuild and repair itself. So it's, it's pretty simple, um, very effective, very powerful. And so I'm, I'm hoping that you all will will take a bite yourself, maybe to even tomorrow to to just uh, juice for 24 hours and see how how you do. So here's some uh, juice combinations. Um, I tell you about you know doing some juices and stuff, but I encourage you. Hey, here's some. Uh, some juice blends um, that you can do. You can add, you know, on some bananas and things of that nature. So you'll um, don't just think that you, you know, just can just do apple juices or carrot juices and stuff. You learn to mix it up. You know, try different things. You, some of them you may fail. Um, some of them aren't the most uh, um, tasteful to some people. But at least if you uh, change it up, mix it up, try different things, then you'll you'll have fun doing it. So.
Here's another one uh, you can do just pure vegetable juices like carrots and cucumbers, cabbage, beets, and things of that nature. So, all right. Here's where I talked about the, the um, uh, acids and uh, uh, alkalins. And you can see here um, that you can, you'll, that the meats, um, you know, bacon, beef, chicken, all this stuff are high in uh, acid content that should be avoided. Mediums will include grains and legumes, um, and some nuts as well, but then dairy products are also there. Low acids then uh, will include cranberries and plums and fats, um, butter, creams, and oils. But when you get to the alkaline, regardless if it's high alkaline, uh, high alkalines are apricots. So don't, you know, you want to eat the apricots. You want to even uh, bust the nut and get the, the latril that's in, in the nut of the apricots. It's very good for fighting back uh, uh, cancers and stuff. Um, but that um, high alkalines to the uh, medium alkaline, alkalinity or the low alkaline, uh, none of that list that's on there, you will see anything of an animal product, uh, animal base, or any any animal byproduct and stuff. This is all plant based and stuff. And so, again, this is something that we would recommend you eating more on a on a daily basis. Now, the low acids or even the median acids. Uh, the only thing that again we would encourage is, for instance, the barley, uh, right, non-GMO corns, lentils, oats, uh, peanuts, moderations. Depends, you know, the rice, the, the rye, and the wheat. So there are some things, anything of a plant base, but nothing of an animal base. Obviously, we would would this we would discourage you to. So um, the other thing here is uh, we normally give this handout to everyone is to if somebody has a a improper diet lifestyle, some people are not able to move from uh, not a good uh, snacks or whatever diet. To the best choice for one financially they may not be able to do that or you know they're trans they need some time to transition but you can at least help them to understand that these are not good chips fried in cottonseed oil and artificial preservatives soda pops with artificial colors cookies with hydrogenated oils ice cream made with milk and the things of that nature with with growth hormones but you can help them say well you know let's try this that's better the chips fried in good grade oils and no no msgs um, and some people can go all the way to the best choice, like organic raw vegetable sticks, you know, 100% juice mixed with sparkling waters, you know, and, instead of doing the soda pops, like Coca-Colas and Pepsis and stuff. Or, you know, instead of getting the cookies, uh, you know, eating raw roasted nuts and seeds and then eating fresh fruit smoothies instead of ice creams and stuff, because you can actually have a, a natural ice cream uh, uh, smoothies and st things of that nature. So at least it's helping, you know, trying to teach them what they can do to transition. Um, some, like I said, can go from not good to the best choice, and some may have to you know, stair step it, but we need to be there to encourage them step by step. So now I'm going to go over a couple of uh, items where, um, you know, here in Tennessee, um, one of the things that, you know, I try to do is find where. Uh, our lifestyle guests where they can go. And so it, while it's great, you know, you'll have a whole food store or, or the Loma Linda um, uh, health food store there, or like what we have is the village market here. They're expensive. Um, whole foods, you know, for this RW Kutzen, uh, or, uh carrot juice, you know, at Walmart, it's organic. So I'd rather encourage people to go where they can be more affordable. So this is kind of where I, I do price shopping uh, and show uh, our guests where what they can do and all that. Um, here's just cranberry. So I'm just going to show a couple of different slides here, uh, the different products that are uh, that are at Walmart that are more affordable, especially as um, inflation continues rising. These prices you know, have continued increasing as well. So, um, but at least you can try to give them a source of where they can go um, that's a little bit more affordable. Uh, these are, as you see, these are Walmart products and stuff. So let's look at uh, the second elimination um, channel, the liver. Uh, very important in, your, your, you know, the battle for uh, staying healthy and uh, reducing or reversing diseases and stuff. So 
It says your liver a powerful shield in a giant battle. It says the liver is the largest organ in your body and carries the greatest workload of all other organs. The liver's complex chemical factory works 24 hours a day, converting the food that you eat in substance. Excuse me, substances vital for health and neutralizing and destroying toxic substances. The liver is essential for fat and protein metabolism, the regulation of body cholesterol, as well as adrenal, thyroid, and other hormones as well. And so, as you can see, you can uh, what our liver is supposed to look like, the healthy liver, as opposed to a, a cirrhosis-looking uh, liver. And so these are different stages of uh, liver damage. One, uh, the healthy one to a fatty liver. Um, even we, we may be eating what we think a healthy diet, it's, it's important for us to make sure that we keep the, the liver in, in a healthy and optimal uh, st uh, uh, state. Uh, fibrosis liver, uh, liver uh, cirrhosis. And, uh, the number five is uh, a liver uh, that has cancer and all that. So... The liver functions, it removes potential toxic byproducts of certain medications. So again, excuse me. One of the things that Seventh-day Adventists we need to seriously be considering is the fact that, you know, and whereas we're moving toward a no buy, no sell, that we need to come off these medications so about the liver Again, it also removes <clears throat> these toxic buildup, prevents short shortages of nutrients by storing vitamins, minerals, and sugars where, where ne uh, necessary. It also metabolizes or breaks down nutrients from food uh, <clears throat> to produce energy when when is needed as well. So it helps metabolize or breaks down these new nu these nutrients. Uh, Next thing is produce uh, most proteins needed by the body as well. And um, helps your body fight infection by removing bacteria fr from the blood. It also produces most of the substances that regulate blood clotting. And number seven, produces bile and compound needed to digest fat to absorb vitamins like A, D, E, and, and K as well. So... <clears throat> the natural course of life can cause the liver to get stressed, overworked, toxic, and exhausted. And this is a natural um, process and stuff. The, the problem is, is that toxic chemicals, food preservatives, bad diet, environmental toxins, cigarettes, alcohol, and prescription drugs all deteriorate the liver, drain its energy, and make it hard or virtually impossible for uh, it to do its job. Since once the liver gets overloaded, accumulating toxins, its life-sustaining functions begin to suffer and gradually drop out. This places the body in a state of emergency that debilitates and damages all other organs, leading to numerous, and here's the key, numerous chronic conditions afflicting millions daily. And so uh, when we learn how to keep our liver uh, clean and functioning, um, detox properly, then it won't, we will not have all these symptoms that, that um, a lot of times we're searching, trying to figure out what's what's going on, and a lot of people overlook the fact that the liver is causing these uh, uh, these effects and stuff, and that by a good liver cleanse, we can actually eliminate all, a lot of these symptoms and stuff. So. Continuing on here, it says, life with a toxic or overloaded liver can be, one, fatiguing, can be depressing, filled with diseases, unwanted conditions, and virtually lead to an, an emotional roller coaster right like i mentioned earlier when a dysfunctional liver goes undetected as an underlying cause it can lead to an endless cycle of failed solutions and further guessing so you know if one thing that i try to encourage everybody you know every year you know go through a colon cleansing go to it through a liver cleansing you know uh go through a blood cleansing and all that do th something that you're naturally detoxing your your body um uh, maintaining because i mean for instance you know, every three to uh, X or more thousand miles, we take our car in or we do our own oil changes on our vehicles, but we don't ever do that with our bodies. Every 5,000 miles or so, we rotate and balance our tires and stuff. You know, we do this to take care of our vehicles, but we don't ever invest on our own bodies 
that have been given to us and fearfully and wonderfully made. So we need to invest in it so we'll be ha happy, happier and healthier in the long run. So here's our liver's enemies, such as pesticides, alcohol, preservatives, antibiotics, caffeine, soft drinks, sugars, tobacco, poor diet, auto exhaust, secondhand smoke, x-ray, fried foods, house cleaners, hydrogenated oils, um, chlorine in water, air, uh, irradiated foods, prescription drugs, many um, body uh, care products as well, um, over-the-counter drugs. Uh, unfortunately, there's people that are using recreational drugs as well. And these are things that are your liver's enemies that we need to eliminate, avoid, uh, and get, them, get those out of our system as well. So this is the decision we have to make. You know, do we want to go um, uh, man's diet or do we want to go God's diet? And so this is a daily basis, daily decisions. And so, you know, uh, we're, we're told there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not follow after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so we've got to encourage one another and say, you know, we've got to make right choices. We may fall but we need to be there to encourage and uplift one another without condemning one another. And so one of the things that's interesting, and, um, you know, when Adam was created, he was created to be about, you know, 16 to 18 foot tall. Uh, also the longevity of man, Adam 930, you can see Methuselah down to 969 and all that. But then after the flood, you started seeing reduction in not only their size, but also their longevity in life as well. And so as you can see the um, God's diet that he gave to Adam and Eve after the fall of man was still plant-based, but then the introduction of flesh uh, was given um, to Noah. And so then that was also used to reduce uh, the, not only their height, their size, but also the length uh, of the life of man. And so, in Genesis 6, 4, it says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And here uh, in Texas, in Crosbenton, Texas, uh, there's a museum that they actually have because they, they found these um, uh, skeletal remains of these, basically these giants, this 47 inch uh, human femur. I um, mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's that's huge there. And so these are what the heights that they have found over the years. Man at about six foot there um, under A, all the way to one sarcophagus was found uh, to be 36 foot tall. Now, um, Goliath was around nine foot tall and um, Adam and Eve were roughly about the 19 foot tall there, 19 and a half foot tall uh, skeleton. Um, Here's where these skeletons, uh, when when they were found, and who they were, who the skeletal remains were, um, just kind of fascinating. And then, if you were to put skin on them and muscle, uh, this is kind of what they would look like. I mean, they would be uh, intimidating, wouldn't they, uh, uh, to be to be able to see them. And so, this six foot man, though they look tall now, uh, would be just little midgets compared to uh, what they were. Uh, in the past and stuff. So here's an actual picture of a sarcophagus that they found when they were unearthing. So just proof that God did uh, create these. It's the majority of the diseases which the human family have been and still are suffering under, they have created by ignorance of their own <clears throat> organic health and work perseveringly to tear themselves to pieces. And when broken down and debilitated in body and mind, Sin for who? The doctor and drug themselves to what? To death. See, we need to learn to be our own doctors. We need to learn what is the prescription that God has actually given us. And that is, again, a plant-based, simple remedies. Yes, we may get sick, and God has methods and means for us to, to um, heal ourselves and stuff through God's aids. Um, here, just um, going to talk about canola oil for a little bit the importance of, of, of avoiding canola oil because a lot of Seventh-day Adventists use canola oil 
Uh, canola oil was a, a Canadian-based uh, product that they actually pay, paid the FDA about $50 million for it to be approved. What it does, uh, it, can, it comes from rapeseed oil, but the problem is, is that the rapeseed oil has been processed. Um, and so therefore, when it's been processed, then it actually, um, it's gen genetically modified, um, then it increases um, the cholesterol levels in, in humans. Now the Indians, they used them, but they didn't, uh, they didn't, there was no process. They used it from in, in its natural source. That it was not a GMO either. And so therefore it did not increase the, uh, their cholesterol levels. Um, <clears throat> uh, Androleukodystrophy uh, or ADL is a rare fatal degenerate uh, disease caused by a built of a long uh, fatty acids which just destroy the myelin or protect the sheathings of the nerves. Canola oil is a long chain fatty acid. It says those who will defend canola oil say that the Chinese and Indians have used it for centuries with no effect. However, it was in an unrefined form as I mentioned earlier. So canola oil from the rapeseed referred to as the Canadian because Canada is mainly responsible uh, for it being marketed. Um, and this is why it's being used in, in a large amount. I would encourage you to stay away from the canola oil um, that, uh, that has been processed because it's not healthy um, to our bodies. So it's over 90% of canola oil is genetically modified. Canola oil is a refined oil that's often partially hydrogenated to increase its stability, but, is, but this increase is negative health effects on the body. And here's the dangers of canola oil. Kidney and liver problems that we just talked about liver. So the majority of canola oil produced today is genetically modified. The side effects of GMOs in general cannot be overstated. It says the kidneys and the liver are absolutely vital to our existence. So ingesting a, a genetically modified food like canola oil is really not something to take lightly as well. So the other thing is life-threatening to uh, heart pro uh, problems. As a monounsaturated oil, Rapeseed oil has a high levels of uh, 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 uric acid. Uric acid is a fatty acid that associated with heart damage, specifically Keishan disease, a disease that manifests itself with fibrotic lesions of the heart. Studies have shown that in areas where people are prone to Keishan, not only are, are selenium levels lower, but um, uh, um, eruptive acid levels are very high in these people. So partially hydrogenated vegetable oils like cannoli are known to, uh, for causing inflammation and uh, calcification of the arteries, which are well-established risk factors for coronary heart disease. So this is, these are some factors. Number three, also increases hypertensions and strokes and all that. Uh, previous studies have shown that the consumption of rapeseed oil and some other types of vegetable oils shortens the lifespan of stroke prone and hyper uh, intensive animal subjects. Specifically, research carried out the Nutrients and Toxicology Research Division of Ottawa discovered that rats bred to have uh, high blood pressure and proneness to stroke die sooner when fed canola oil uh, as the sole source of, of fat. Additionally, the rats fed the non-canola oil based dyes live longer than the rats fed canola oil. So right there uh, to me is uh, enough that we shouldn't be eating it. Another study published in 2000 in toxicology letters specifically looked at the effects of canola oil on blood uh, coagulation time, on how long it takes for the blood to actually clot in uh, people that are, that are stroke prone and all that. The study found that there was a canola induced shortening of blood coagulation time and increased fragility in red blood cell membranes, which may promote the occurrence of strokes in animal subjects that are stroke prone as well. The other thing is it may re, uh, retard normal growth. Um, I'm not gonna read all this uh, for you because again, um, we need to eliminate this from our, our diet. Increases intake of unhealthy trans fat as well. Um, number six, numerous potential GMO uh, side effects, the toxicity levels in it, the allergic reactions from that we've, we've been finding from those that have been eating this. Uh, immunosuppression, it actually does suppress our immune system. It also helps uh, feed cancers and 
then it, it also eliminates uh, the you know the, the the nutrition in our foods that that we're needing because of uh, the GMO um, and what it affects the the, the foods uh, when it's it's used to, as as a heating uh, product and all. So what do we need to uh, to substitute with? Well, I would encourage you to look at a cold press virgin coconut oil. You, uh, this one is from Costco. It's actually, um, the price is very interesting. It's $12, $12 twelve dollars twelve ninety nine for an eighty four ounce. Um, the, the the reason I I suggest this is because when you look at the smoke point, um, when when it starts breaking down, um, um, and becomes or uh, starting to become a carcinogen, it, at least it's at a three hundred fifty degree point level. Um, extra virgin olive oil is another. A good one to use. It's at a 375 um, degree um, smoke point level of using. Um, avocado is, in my opinion, the best uh, source. Now, some people are not going to like the avocados when they're using it as an oil, but it has a smoke point of 500 degrees. There's very uh, high nutrient values of avocado. It says avocado is a great choice. It's unrefined like extra virgin or olive oil, but it has a higher smoking point, which means it can be used to cook it at a higher heat and is great for stir fry. So it doesn't have much flavor, which makes it a good option for cooking. It's just creamy like an avocado, uh, says uh, uh, Howard. Howard. Says avocado oil contains both monounsaturated and polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids. Said it has one of the highest monounsaturated fat contents among cooking oils, as well as vitamin E. Says one down, uh, downside is that it, it tends to be more expensive. So yes, avocado oil is a little bit more expensive. I don't recommend it as the first option for cooking the avocado oil because of the cost, but I've been seeing that the, the cost has been coming down uh, as of lately as well. Um, eight symptoms of a liver related disease that should not be overlooked. Again, uh, this, these are the stages of liver disease because when we're using these, these uh, uh, wrong oils, canola oil, vegetable oils, um, sapphire uh, uh, oil, all these things will eventually cause liver disease as well. And so these are uh, just the pictures of some stages of liver damages and stuff that we need to avoid. It says, although they, although they may take a while to appear, symptoms of advanced liver-related disease are hard to miss, and you should be seen by a physician immediately if you start to experience any of them. That said, some of the more common symptoms include, look, jaundice, stomach pains, swollen ankles or legs, okay, dark colored urine, dark or pale stools, fatigue, nauseous or vomiting, or loss of appetite. So if you're kind of experiencing some of these, these symptoms, then you need to look at either, you know, uh, seeing a physician or at least go ahead and looking at uh, doing a liver uh, gallbladder cleanse and stuff. And we do have, have a five-day liver gallbladder instructions for those that are interested and all. So here's the five-day juice, live foods, and liver gallbladder cleanse. Each morning for five days on an empty stomach, put eight ounces of fresh squeezed citrus juice in a blender. Add to that eight ounces of distilled water, one clove garlic, one tablespoon of olive oil, a piece of ginger the size of the end of, of your thumb. Then you want to do is liquefy all this. As you can tolerate it, then on, this is on day one. Then on the next four days, you want to increase the olive oil to four tablespoons. The next day you add one more tablespoon up until four and the garlic up to four cloves. It might help to chase this down with a few ounces of fresh citrus juice or grape juice or what have you. 50 minutes later, after you've done this, drink uh, two cups of, we have what's called an ultimate stone dissolved liver detox tea. Um, and then what it, will, what it does, it will help move any waste uh, material uh, from, from your liver into the colon out uh, into, the, into the, the stool. One hour following the, on days one, two and five, one hour following the ultimate stone dissolved liver detox tea. For the next six hours, drink eight to 10 ounces of fresh raw live juice every hour. Now, if you don't have a champion juicer, um, then like I showed you, if you can go to Walmart or if you can afford going to Whole Foods or the Loma Linda or whatever health food store, 
um, then you can ju get the juices. Now, the uh, fresh juice, what you're going to juice for that day, if you have a champion or whatever, that's going to be your best bet. But if you can't, do what you can and, and, and all that. So, so on day one, two, and five, you want to, uh, for six hours, drink eight to 10 ounces of fresh, raw, live juice every hour. Nothing from a can or a bottle. If you can, avoid that. But if not, then do the best you can. It says get the juice around and juice uh, raw vegetables and fruits. Um, more vegetables and fruits, especially um, carrots as well. On day three and four, one hour following the ultimate stone dissolve liver detox tea, uh, eat one plate of fresh raw live fruits. Then four to five hours later, later, eat one plate of fresh raw vegetables or a salad. So basically on three, day three and four, you're eating just raw. Four hours later, eat one large glass, uh, um, take one large glass of raw juice or fresh fruit. And then during these days, you want to continue drinking the plenty of water uh, during, the, during the cleanse. So we recommend to do this cleanse once every 90 days or even more. If you know people that have a, um, a, a jaundice liver or they have liver cancer, then it's necessary for them to do this really every single week until they're able to reverse and the liver can be rejuvenated as best as possible. So here are some results from some people that have done uh, the liver gallbladder cleanse where the, the, there's gallstones that they've passed as well. And, and everything. I've even had people that had their gallbladder taken taken out, um, and they still pass gallstones. So it doesn't it doesn't mean just because your gallbladder's been cut out, removed, that your body's not going to produce gallstones. In, in the bile duct, it will still produce gallstones. And so it's uh, I would encourage everybody still to at least still do the liver gallbladder cleanse as best as possible. So so another product that we do use, um, how to get your liver, uh, a new lease on life is uh, Peter Gillum's uh, liver rejuvenator. So if people can do the five day liver gallbladder cleanse, this is another good option as well. Um, supports healthy liver function. That's the detoxifying center of the body, the liver, uh, basically working on daily uh, workload of neutralizing toxins such as pesticides, caffeine, alcohol, medications, chemicals, preservatives, auto exhaust, and cigarettes. Um, the liver rejuvenator may be to, uh, detoxifying um, the liver as well as possibly help restore its levels of effectiveness. And so again, this is something that I would suggest you, you uh, looking at. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop before we get into the, your kidneys because this is, I won't be able to complete this in the next five minutes, but I appreciate your all's uh, uh, attendance and your willingness to allow me to share with you all. Uh, tomorrow we will continue on in the elimination channels. And then once we're done with that, we'll move into the herbology. So if we can, let's have a word of prayer as we close, okay? Father in heaven, we again are so grateful to you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for um, the, um, the information that we've been learning for those that have gone before us that have discovered these things and what um, the, our bodies, how they function and how they react to different, uh, not on the foods that we're eating, but different supplements, different herbs, and how we react to things that man has made. And we just ask now that you would lead and guide us that we will make right decisions in our, in our diet, that we will eliminate things that are harmful out of our closets and that we will Father, follow your instructions and that we can be in health and that we can glorify you and we can be an example to those that we come in contact. So be with those that, that were with us this evening, bless them and keep them and those that may be watching later on in Jesus name, amen.